Hey everyone and welcome to my latest video. This time I will be showing you how I paint the fur on my cedar fire rings. Let me show you how. I'm starting off by showing you a picture of the Svirangs covered in just the base coats. Uh, for the base coats I'm using Night Lord's Blue, Incubi Darkness and from Vallejo, um, Vallejo Model Color Orange Brown. Now I am not too worried about the transitions in these stages, so I'm just painting it really fast. Um, and uh, just just picking up two colors with my brush, mixing it on the model, stuff like that. Nothing too neat, and which is also why I'm not showing it on video because, well, I know you guys can create a base coat of color, and I know you're also more interested in how I created the fur. So for the fur, I am using Vallejo model color emerald. Uh, Vallejo model color royal blue and then GW Silverite green. For the yellow, I am just using G GW Yeru yellow and Flash Glitch yellow. Now, as you can see in the video, I am starting off with the Vallejo model color emerald. And basically, what you want to do is cover uh, every part you just covered with uh, the base coat of Incubi Darkness with textured fur of the Vallejo model color emerald. The way I created the texture, the, the fur look, <laughs> it's uh, gonna sound very simple but it's basically just lines. Just Draw lines over the model in the direction you want the fur to go, basically. And um, one coat of lines will not be enough, so you're gonna have to go over the same spot multiple times. And as you can see me painting, I'm also not painting it really slow. I did speed up the video a little bit, because otherwise it would take an hour. But I am creating those lines in a fast, um, smooth move. And when you start this, it's going to be a bit awkward because you're, you're afraid it might go wrong. It won't. Trust me on this, you might go wrong a little, a, a couple of times. It's actually more likely to go wrong on the neck part where the, all the waves of fur are already sculpted, the sort of manes. They're already sculpted on, and because of those bends and folds, it's more likely to go wrong. The body is actually easier to create the textured fur look on than the neck part is. And yeah, you might think this will definitely go wrong, I won't be able to do this. But you will, trust me on this. It's just a matter of um, getting over your fears and having the confidence to just try it. The beauty of this is also that um, if you go back over with the Incubi Darkness, it will not be the complete same color because Incubi Darkness over black is darker than Incubi Darkness will be over the emerald, but you can still work it back. So even if you make a big mistake, just go back with the Incubi Darkness, you can fix a lot this way. So don't be scared to just give it a go and just try. It's also, what's really handy is that fur is not perfectly neat, so I don't need 100% perfect lines every single time. So even if, um, sometimes when you press on your brush, too hard, the line gets a bit thicker, for example, but that's not a problem with fur. Because you want the lines to be uneven, you don't want them to be evenly spaced as well, so that's why you have to go a little bit faster. If you go a little bit faster, you are not as precise, so you are not creating lines in uh, an even pattern, even space, 
uh, evenly spaced from each other. If you go faster, you lose that little bit of control and that actually um, works to your advantage because it makes the fur look more natural. Now I did, um, I did want some Incubi Darkness in the shadows to still show through. Not a lot, but just that some shadows were a bit darker and um, the top parts were lighter because that would catch more light. So you can see me do this in the video as well. I am leaving the lower parts of all his muscles and um, ridges darker, so I'm not picking that out as much with the emerald or not at all even at some in some parts and um, you might start with a little bit well not enough of the emerald I did at, at the beginning so I kept too much incubi still showing through and it made it look a little bit unnatural I mean it's not natural uh, there's no green cats, but um, it's just a matter of going back over it again with a little bit more of the emerald. And even after you've already completed uh, the next step with the uh, Sybarite green, it's not a problem. Because you can still paint it back or paint a little bit more of the emerald over everything and then go back with the Sybarite green again as well. And because you're painting such fast, uneven, yeah, just random lines, there's still a bit of the Incubi Darkness showing through, even on the top of his back, for example, which is gonna be very light. But I don't mind that, because, well, fur has a lot of colors. I have two cats, and I did look at my cats. Not that the colors are relevant, but you can still see the darkest colors of your cat on the lightest spots. So that's, it's only natural to leave some Incubi Darkness showing through. If that happens, it's perfect. It just gives it more natural look. And if it doesn't, it's not a problem as well, because you still will be going over it with the Sybarite Cream. So there will be Emerald showing through between the Sybarite Cream. And you don't really have to be worried, because, well, as you can see, I have to go over the same spot multiple times with the emerald as well, because it's it's a good paint. It has really good coverage, but even then, because of your lines, because of the randomness of the lines, you need to place a lot of them to really cover a model. And that only helps, that makes your job easier. It takes a bit more work, sure, but it's better this way to create a good textured look than having a really big brush and then going over the whole model in one go because then you don't have the textured look anymore and as you can see, that's how I do the green. Now that is only emerald. I haven't gone over it with the Sybarite green yet. So that's a next step. But before I wanted to do that, I wanted to do the blue. So I'm using a Vallejo model color Royal Blue. And I'm painting the tops of his legs mostly with this. I want to keep his feet dark. So I will be painting those, uh, leaving those the black primer and then painting them with Vallejo model color dark gray just a little bit but they almost look black now the royal blue is a very opaque color 
so it has really good coverage. This makes it a well a little bit different from the emerald. So you're gonna have to be a little bit more precise in where you place your color, where you place your lines. But this is not only the color, this also has to do with the fact where you're placing your blue. So for me, it's the top of the legs. And the... Yeah, basically the spots where I want my fur to be brighter are smaller than where I place my emerald, for example. So... Here the trick is that the Night Lord's Blue is a very opaque color, so it's really easy to tone down the Royal Blue with it, just by glazing, by... And you don't even have to make a glaze out of it. You can just go back over it with the Night Lord's Blue, just from your wet palette a little bit thin down, and that's enough. Because, well, it, it is a really nice paint to do that with. To create the transition between the blue and the emerald. The emerald has a little bit... I'm not sure if it's better coverage, but the color shows more than the royal blue does. So painting the emerald over the royal blue works the best to create this transition. And I basically do this. I paint the emerald over the royal blue, but I also just with my brush pick up a little bit of royal blue and a little bit of emerald and then because I rub my brush on my thumb it mixes the paint and then you get basically a mixed color between the two and that is a good way to create your transition and because I'm not looking for the same color every single time it's perfect to do it this way because um, just picking those two colors with your brush won't give you an even mixture each time. So sometimes it will be more green, sometimes it will be more blue. And you well, you will see this the moment you rub your brush on your thumb or a pad, anything you use. You can already see it's got to be more green this time, it's got to be more blue. So you know the spots where you can place the next lines of fur. And this is a really easy way to create a transition. It also does not have to be 100% smooth because it is fur. So this the raw rough texture helps with creating transitions. And this way is easier in creating transitions than uh, a smooth blend. It also does not have to be perfectly smooth because it is fur. So the rough textured look that you're actually going for helps with creating a transition between the two colors. And you can go over it as much as you want until you're happy. So now I'm moving on to the Sybarite Green. So the Sybarite Green is my highlight color. And with this color I'm going to be picking out the top sides of all the ridges and his back, the mains, stuff like that. Now, you apply the Sybarite color in exactly the same way as you did the Emerald. The only difference between the Sybarite and the Emerald is that with the Sybarite you're going to make shorter brush strokes. So, basically you're creating the transition from the Sybarite to the Emerald to the Incubi Darkness. So instead of picking out all the lines you just made with the Emerald, you're going to make smaller brush strokes, shorter brush strokes, and leave some of the Emerald showing through at the lower parts. The application is still exactly the same and this also helps again because when you make 
a, a bit of a longer line with the Sybarite and the next line is shorter again and stuff like that, it also helps with that natural fur texture. Now, as you can see, I left a bit of a darker line on his back in the middle, um, like a horse. And it, I painted the fur more like a horse as well, instead of a cat. Because a cat fur is all smoothed backwards, so the lines would basically go straight um, over his back towards, yeah, towards his tail. That's <laughs> what I was looking for. But um, I left uh, a line in the middle and I created the fur texture down his legs instead of towards the tail. Um, it's just preference. It doesn't matter how you create the fur and this is just for me, I thought this would look better. I do think that's a big part of... Um, painting models as well. It's not always about realism. It's about... Uh, it's mostly about having fun. <laughs> How do you like to paint something? Um, it doesn't matter what others think of it as well, unless you're of course entering a competition and you really want to win a medal for example. Then it does matter a little bit what a judge would think. But mostly it's doing what you like. And you can just continue with Silverite Green until you're happy with your result. You can also, if you think, oh, I've painted too much Silverite on, you can just go back with the Emerald. It's not a problem. The Emerald, so, okay. The Emerald will be a bit more brighter if you paint it over the Silverite, because you're painting it over a lighter color. But just, you can tone that down with a little bit of Silverite as well. Or even with a tiny glaze of uh, Incubi Darkness. If you make the Incubi Darkness into a glaze, it does not have as much coverage. So if you glaze that over your emerald, it gets toned down a lot as well. And that can help. That can also help if you've accidentally painted too much emerald over your Incubi base coat. But it's not really that necessary. These are just more tips and tricks to help you figure out what to do if something went wrong, for example. Now, as the last step of the fur, I have to paint the yellow, of course. Now, I painted the, his neck with a base coat of orange-brown from Vallejo. That paint does not have good coverage over black, so it will take a lot of layers to do that. But, once you have it, <laughs> you can move on to the aerial yellow. Now, I actually had more trouble with this part of the model than any other part, because of the angle. Because I was, uh, I wanted to record it, so I had to paint it on camera. But it's um, at the front of the model, and it's a pretty big model, it's a pretty big base as well. It's a bit of an unnatural angle. The model was, yeah, towards me too far, so I had to keep my hands in a bit of a... Yeah, a bit of an awkward spot. I did manage, but it's <laughs> not the easiest. The ridges don't always help as well, because sometimes your brush is like, yeah, I don't like going over this fold, I want to go down into the recesses. 
So be wary of that. And you apply the aerial yellow in the same way as you did the royal blue and the emerald. You leave some orange brown showing in the recesses just to create that shadow highlight transition and give it that nice look. Now for the transition between the yellow and the green, it's the same as the blue and the green. You just pick up some yellow, pick up some green, mix it on your thumb, and then carefully paint it between the two colors. And what you do have to be aware of is that the yellow will make the green very vibrant, very light, so if you make the transition too big, it will catch the eye more than your yellow actually does. So keep it small and you can even tone it down with some emerald or even incubate darkness. If you think this is too bright, this will, uh, this will attract more attention or too much attention. Another good color to tone down the yellow over the green a little bit is the Sybarite because that has a little bit of white so that desaturates the color a little bit as well. What can also help, I didn't do this, but it can also help to glaze a little bit of yellow and green. So basically go for the aero yellow or the emerald green and glaze that over your transition spot between the two colors. This way, this is an easy way of toning it down as well and creating a transition without having to worry about applying too much color in one go with your brush. Because a glaze applies color, but in a really slow and gradient way. Which is what I'm doing as well. I won't be using the last tap of yellow, the flash gets over any of the green or the transition parts. It's That is just for highlighting the yellow. And that highlighting the yellow is exactly the same as you did the green the emerald with the sybarite, just pick out the tops of the mains, the parts that catch the most light, and pick them out with the flash gets yellow. And the flash gets yellow does give it that tiny little bit of pop, I don't know how to describe it otherwise, but it just gives it that, gives it that little bit extra. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed.